JQ bringing you the latest ENT going round in Ghana and beyond. Let's jump into our first story. Um, so yesterday we woke up to some very, very sad news of the passing of former Ghanaian striker Junior Agogo who passed away at the age of 80. Now since he um his death was announced a lot of celebrities have been reacting to the news with a lot of them sharing their condolences sending their sympathies to the family and quite a number of them are also you know giving some heat to some people so um Ghanaian um, musician based in the uk pastor and dr sonny badu um reacted to the news and he did it in a very unusual way you know, he started by chastising the GFA and Agogo's former um, teammates for not visiting him and giving him the love that he needed. But now that he's dead, he's trending on social media and everybody is talking about him. And he called out to, you know, Ghanaians to celebrate their heroes whilst they are alive. And I think he's not the only one. Stoneboy also took a screenshot of someone who had similar sim um, sentiments and had posted it on Instagram and then posted it on his Twitter and said, read the caption. And a lot of, a lot of people came for him for saying, you know what, the person is dead. We all, you know, um, are just sending our well wishes. Why is it that you're trying to make it seem like some people are just being hypocritical by sending out their condolences? For me, I really stand with Stone Boy and Dr. Sonny Badu's sentiments. I mean, when Agogo was alive and he had that BBC interview, you know, you could feel the hurt in his eyes when he said, um, now nobody reaches to me or nobody gets in touch with me again. And for someone who played 27 games for the Black Stars and scored 12 goals, I think it should be someone who should be on the Ghana Football Association's top list if he's not in the best of shape. But if indeed he was neglected by them and now everybody's going on with R.I.P. Agogo. And there was one which even had hashtag Ghana loves Agogo. But hashtag Ghana didn't look for Agogo when he was not in a good state. So, I mean, yes, we get it. We are sad by his death. But please, let's limit our long long um you know messages of trying to seem like we know him so much and then we're there for him so much he's dead we wish he has so rest in peace and we're waiting for the family to bring up funeral arrangements so that um you know he'll be given the befitting burial that he deserves i mean it was it's tough it's been it's been tough since the news broke but we can finally lay him to rest and then move on from it now let's move on to my next story and my next story is quite hot and quite controversial it's been the topic everybody has been talking about today on social media so we all know that earlier this year and late last year a lot of um top media personalities who were working for the eib network left the eib network to other networks and other jobs and everybody started raising question what is going on why is everybody leaving why can't they be paid are they not getting money is it because you unibank and unicredit have been closed down is that why you know eib is going down there were a whole lot of rumors and a whole lot of speculations going around but i think we can finally put those um speculations to rest and call them facts because the um ceo of eib network which happens to be bolare has come out to confirm that indeed the network had struggled a lot in 2018 and that even forced him to delay the payment of salaries for seven good months so all the staff of eib network were not being paid for seven months in 2018 and for those who had families and for those who you know um had a lot on their plate they couldn't stand the situation so some found excuses to leave and it's funny how bolare talks about how they left you know um, according to him some will come oh i'm going to do my master's Shroom, they leave and then by the time he realizes they are they are with a different network some comes my wife is sick we are traveling and then they all left one way or the other with different excuses but he also revealed that he started the eib network with 483 staff members across all their platform across the whole nation from the ultimate star live um gh1 kasapa 483 but by the end of 2018 or let's say even now he has about just 300 so quote unquote about 
a hundred and eighty three people have let the EIB network and when he made um this um this revelation at the IS twenty nineteen the youth um empowerment summit 2019 a lot of people feel he's just trying to come out to say it's now because he's trying to make the people that left look bad for not being loyal to him and then others are also defending that it's 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 gonna things are hard we need money to take off ourselves and families how do you expect me to work for seven months and not get money so in case you've been wondering why bella mundi giovanni caleb um jason la um, Kafui Day, Anita Eskin, and uh, Shoko, they all left the EIB network. Well, there you have it. Bulare couldn't pay salaries for more than seven months and then uh, they just had to leave. I mean, hopefully he'll be able to sort things out and be able to manage the 300 that is left now. Because Charlie, unemployment, no. <laughs> I had the rough dread. So I can't be working for seven months and not getting no money. <laughs> okay, let's move on to... um. My next story, which has to do with Scopa Tomana, Toda Podada, you know DC Mama, this one there, EDC DJ Black, Patapa, didn't come to play. I mean, he turned DJ Black into shreds. And it's crazy because a lot of people don't know what Patapa's anger is, you know, it's, 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 um, it's coming from. People do not understand why he has so much gorge with DJ Black, but many believe it's because um, DJ Black did not include him in his 50 MCs of all time in Ghana. You know, his top 50 Ghanaian MCs of all time. And But I felt like I've been on CNN, I've been on BBC, I deserve to be on that list. And then DJ Black comes back and says, no, you just play around, you are not a talent. And Patapa says, hold on one minute. You, DJ Black, you're not even in the top 700 DJs in Ghana. If he is counting top DJs in Ghana, DJ Black is number 700. I mean, do we even have up to 200 DJs in Ghana? That's a question I want to... I want to know. That's an answer I want to get. But for the past, says, DJ Black's brand is baller. It's trash. DJ Black um, only eats jollo. <laughs> DJ Black only eats Jollof. Nobody knows DJ Black apart from Joy FM. Uh, he started from somewhere. What does he use his influence and his brand for? He doesn't use his brand for anything better. So why would he rubbish him, Patapa? But he is chosen. He's a chosen one by God. So he's not going to look at anybody. <laughs> and he's going to do his thing. So F of DJ Black is Patapa all the way. I mean... But I let it go. If you are not the top 50 Ghanaian MCs, you're definitely going to be on the list of the top 20 Ghanaian comedians. Trust me, you are that good. <laughs> you guys, look at the video. <laughs> okay, guys, let's move on to our next story, which has been hot because Juliette Ibrahim has been on a rampage. You know, speaking it all, saying it all, giving it all out, left, right, center, back and forth. And if you are not lucky to be on the good side, you receive a hurt, which I'm sure that TV Africa presenter wish she didn't. So if you guys recall earlier this week, um, a host from TV Africa's Pay Muka, Akosia Sexy, Akosia Farmer, you know, sat on her show and blasted Juliet Ibrahim for being the reason why her first marriage with Kojo Safu Jr. failed and that she should go back to him. And then Juliet coming back in the best club back of the year to, you know, call the girl like Kopeme and also in the process revealed that she actually got cheated on. Her ex husband got his mistress pregnant. And later moved on to marry her when they, you know, divorced. So she's not in fault and there's no way she's ever, ever going to go back to Kojo Safu Jr. Kojo Safu Jr. has been quiet, you know, since their whole divorce in 2014. He's never, ever spoke about these issues. But then he felt like, you know, I'm not still going to say anything, but I'm going to say something. You know, that thing where you're saying that thing, but you're saying it on the low. So he took to Instagram, he took to social media and he said what? 
I have never told my side of the story this whole time and I won't do so now. I'd rather use my time to focus on government policies to build new um, automobiles for Kantanka Automobile rather than waste my time on someone's made up life story. So quote on unquote, he's saying that Juliette Ibrahim is lying. She's lying about everything. She's lying about her whole story that she's put in a book. She's not being honest. And then she's just lying and saying things that, you know, makes her feel good and cheer her up. But he does not have time to respond to anything. He's not going to say anything, but he has responded. You feel me? Yeah. That is underground response. <laughs> even if that is a thing, I don't even know. So that's what's happening with Juliet and Kojo Safo. I mean, can Juliet Ibrahim just promote her book without bringing out more um, skeletons in the closet? He sh she should just let it go. She should let it go and just promote her book. Huh, speaking of letting go, guess who is letting go of his marriage after just seven months? Yes, guys, it's Liam Hamsworth. He is filing for divorce. He has filed for divorce and he's calling it quits with his on and off girlfriend, on and off wife, Miley Cyrus. Now, the two of them have been dating since 2009, 2010 when they shot a movie together. They break up, they come together. Miley Cyrus goes on a crazy black girl episode, you know, wrecking ball video, crazy doing wild stuff. Miley takes, um, Liam takes her back, they settle, they break up, they got married last year, December, it was all sweet and nice, they lost their house to the California f uh, fires, they came back together, and it seems this time, mm -mm, Liam Samsworth says he's done, and sources close to Miley Cyrus are also saying that Miley Cyrus didn't make the relationship work because Liam was forcing her to not be herself, I mean it's, it's Hollywood. They are never setting up what they want. It's like a game. Marriage is like a game in Hollywood. So Liam has filed for divorce. And then um, apparently Miley gets to keep the dogs. Liam gets to keep whatever. We don't know what's going on with them. But I hope this whole episode ends. And then both of them can move on. But moving on to someone who is um, a couple who is moving on to greater heights. It's Justin and Hailey Bieber. So these guys, if you remember, they got married last year or early this year. Yeah, early this year. And then they did it very quietly. They just went to the courthouse. They signed. They said, I do. And then that was it. They didn't have any big wedding. There were no celebrities. There were no photos. But it looks like the couple are finally going to have that. They're going to have the big flashy wedding with the stars and the pictures and everything. And that's going to be in December. So, um... They, they, they shared their wedding invitation, which is very, very fun. I've never seen such creative wedding invitation. They had comics and also congratulations to them. And we can't wait to see all the cute pictures that comes out of the wedding. Okay, guys, that's about it for Daily Bass today. But trust me, Monday, we have a lot for you because a lot is happening this weekend. A whole lot is happening this weekend. Chaluate, Goldie Movie Awards, Jamison Music Fest, um... Trigmatic has a new album. There's a listening party happening. So there's so much to talk about. So make sure you come back here, right here. I'm out TV on Monday and get the latest, trendiest entertainment news happening in Ghana and beyond. I'm JQ. Follow me on Instagram at I am Jackie underscore JQ and Twitter is at JQ underscore B E B E. And I will see you same time, same place tomorrow. I'm out.